You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone! Riddick is coming to theaters, and you know what that means. I lost faith in humanity. And it also means another episode of Don't F with the Original! With Nicholas, I'm the V-Game Correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, Editor-in-Chief of Idiomatic, Movie Critic, and man who is indeed a little bit wary <laughs> of the world when you see Riddick coming out. Now, for those of you who don't know, because there's no numbers attached to it, Riddick is the third entry in a series that started with Pitch Black, continued with the Chronicles of Riddick, and then Riddick. The, don't ask me how that naming Riddick. sequence works. The Riddick. So, you know, as things go, we're going to have to go ahead and review Pitch Black. All right. So what happens in, in Pitch Black, uh, a transport ship, transporting people in a cryo cryogenic fugue, uh, is forced to crash land on a desert planet. Uh, in that cargo is a criminal known as Riddick. He's a murderer. Uh, and on that planet, bad things start to happen, and they're thinking it's Riddick killing people, but it's apparently the ind indigenous life form of that planet that's killing people. And that life form is very averse to light. Fortunately, they're in the desert planet with three suns, so everything's okay. Unfortunately, we learned that a month-long eclipse is going to start, you know, it's exactly that day where the crash landed. So they have to find a way to escape that planet, and they need to, everybody they can, so they have to get the help from Riddick, our hero of the movie, I guess. Well, if, a bit of an anti-hero, and certainly I think it's almost set up as a quote-unquote surprise that he's going to be the hero and not just a secondary threat, as is often the case in such movies. Yeah. Obviously, like, I don't feel that we're spoiling the movie by saying that that's not the case, because, you know, you know that the Chronicles of Riddick exist, and as well as Riddick, so. Yeah. He turns out to be the hero. Um, oh, God, this movie's lame. Oh, uh, it's terrible. Oh, uh, I mean, he made a lot of noise back when he came out, and I think a lot of it is Vin Diesel's charisma, which was far more impressive back then than it is now that we've seen him in countless movies where he's sort of lost a lot of his cred, and a couple of movies where he's really found his feet and found his place as an actor so that Riddick doesn't really feel as impressive anymore. Like, I'd much rather see him in Fast and Furious 32 than in anything Riddick-related, you know? Yes. Yeah, his really character is just, you know, I'm, I'm tough and I'm cool. And that's that's all there was to that character. And I find that pretty hard to believe from a guy that looks like Right Said Fred. But yeah, the whole premise of the movie is based on, you know, Vin Diesel being cool. The rest of it is kind of secondary. The special effects are okay. I did enjoy, like, the, the you know, the special effects. When the, the, the planet is basically going to block the sun to the one month long eclipse. I kind of really like that. The planet should not move that fast, in all honestly, <laughs> as an astronomer I'm speaking. And if the planet is really moving that fast, the eclipse should not last one month, okay? It should last a few minutes. But I digress. <laughs> it, it was pretty cool to watch. Uh, the creatures that they're hiding from... Uh, well, they're just generic aliens, let's face it. They're, yeah. They're, they're, they're a monster that... It's only particularities that it doesn't come into the sunlight, which is integral to the plot. N nothing else about it is remotely original or interesting. Yeah. And e even then, the creature makes no sense because it lives in the desert. So what, what does it eat when humans don't crash land on the planet? I asked myself the <laughs> same question. I was like, what does it normally eat? I mean, I guess you see some bones of stuff. So I guess maybe they ate everything. Yeah, and now that they're... I guess eating each other because they, they were a lot of fighting between each other. So maybe they, they're cannibals. Um, and they, I guess they're just happy to have humans now, you know. Uh, but yeah, that, that creature is nothing special. The, the special effects of the ships and everything else it looks like the technology we would have today if we really, you know, put our minds to it. We could build stuff, planes that look like that. Yeah, although, in fairness, it's an old movie. Yeah. Still, it, it, it would look like stuff you could build back then, even then, so not that not that special. I guess I've grown tired of computer screens everywhere, and I kind of like the idea of a future where they don't go for that aesthetic. Yeah. So that was kind of cool, but there is an interesting subplot though in the movie, in fairness, uh, the, with the co-pilot, which places her as what we think will be the main character. 
And I kind of like the bait and switch on that level where you think she's going to be the last girl to survive the main hero, the the Ripley, if you will, yeah. of Pitch Black. And uh, then Vin Diesel slowly takes over the movie and it's sort of a cool bait and switch. And I think it would have worked really well if not for the screenwriter being so in love with Riddick yes. that he will not stop not stop having everybody worship the coolness that is Riddick. Yeah, also it would have worked better if I had known the main actress as well. I, she's a complete unknown to me. Oh, she's been in a couple movies. In so it, it, it was like, um, who is she? You know, when you have Vin Diesel and her, you, you unfortunately, it, it's it's unfair knowledge that you know this, but it's you know the movie's going to revolve around Vin Diesel. And as you said, right, the way he was filmed... Even when he was like tied up at the beginning, which was why would I ever want to see that? Uh, but it's like man, long shots of Vin Diesel all over, and it's like yeah, yeah, I don't need to see this. He's tied up. He's not doing anything interesting, really. Move along. <laughs> I did like the, um, the the woman's arc where at the beginning she wanted to jettison the whole crew to save her ass. And she, she's really indecisive because, you know, she's not the captain. She keeps repeating it over and over. I'm not the captain. I'm not the captain. And basically, to save the few... She she's she basically makes it with the ship and she tries to stop Vin Diesel from leaving. Mm. And she could save herself again like she wanted to do at the beginning. Like abandoning the rest of the, 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 the passengers like she was going to. And she could have been like super indecisive and falling in. But no, she says, you know, no, you're going back to help me get them. Because I'm the captain, I'm deciding this. And she basically pretty much orders him to do so. And, you know, she, it's enough that he says, okay, fine, you know, let's mm. go. So I, I did like the fact, you know, that that's an art. That's a solid art. Yeah. You know, that she she, she became from some, somebody very flawed. Like, she, she gained those qualities that, you know, made her problematic at the beginning. Mm. That's what I, I, I kind of liked about the movie. Yeah. No, I agree. They had a very solid bait and switch. And, like, I don't know. Like, Vin Diesel back then gave really good head. Or I don't know what. <laughs> but, like, the filmmakers were madly in love with him. And, yeah. like, completely derailed their own story to just sort of linger on the awesomeness that is Vin Diesel. He, he was huge back then. But, so. actually, that movie is what launched him. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. I like... Vin Diesel's acting in it, to be honest. Okay. I think he gives a solid performance. I think he does manage quite a bit of charm, considering how vile his character is without the filmmakers realizing it. Yeah. And I think he does manage to get our sympathy just the same by... I hate to admit it, by being cool. I guess. What is there? There's a little boy that turns out to be a little girl. Spoiler alert. Spoiler? How could, How was that even a shock? <laughs> That boy looked like a girl, talked like a girl. That boy was a girl. <laughs> All the time. It's not because, you know, my name is Jack. Yeah, we very believable Jack, you know? It's it's ridiculous. I don't know, maybe his balls hasn't, haven't dropped yet, you know? You know, yeah, no, a guy that old, you know, it, it was obviously a girl the whole time, you know? You, you could go ahead. Here's my bigger question. Who cares? Like, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like he changes anything. It's like, Oh, you're a boy. No, you're a girl. And the aliens are attracted to estrogen, so it changes the plot. No. No. They're, they're attracted to testosterone. It changes. No. Uh, they're, they're, they, 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 they're attracted to blood. And she was... Well, menstruating. Bleeding, yeah. <laughs> menstruating is not a dirty word. You can say menstruating. Yeah. Uh, you're right. <laughs> and... Uh, so, you know, it's, 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 I didn't have a problem with that. It's just, I really, when that twist came, like, it was really like, <laughs> who, what, like, what kind of misogynist mind thinks that's a super interesting twist? Like, it, you know, it's like, oh, now they're really in trouble. It's a chick. I was like, yeah, because, like, the 14-year-old boy was super efficient before by yeah. virtue of his penis because, you know, they were going to enter the planet of the men's room, you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> You also learn the danger of solar power because they use a solar powered car because they need to go back to like their old ship mm -hmm. to get some batteries to power the new ship that's at the settlement. And then the eclipse comes and their solar power car stops working. That made me laugh a lot. Like, it's like, even if you don't believe that it has an alternate source of energy, which most would, 
at you know, at least today it would, maybe in the future it won't. Yeah. You would think they would be capable of storing energy for a little bit. Yeah. You know, like no, it's dark, it stopped working. It's like so every time it rains you can't move forward. Like this is the stupidest car in the world. <laughs> yes. And especially that they're in the desert, so if the thing that gathers energy gets dusty, you're done. These things are kinda of cool. I uh the way the color changes is sort of a nice idea, but a little bit over the top again. I didn't like that. I did. yeah. Why does the color... Ch I mean, I know different suns maybe have different colors, but it, it went from yellow to blue to yellow again. It's like, choose a sun and go with that color, please. <laughs> I thought it was a clever way to get around the fact that it's an independent production with crap production values and to make things look shinier and sort of more polished than they are they sort of oversaturated the light so that you don't you don't see anything very clearly okay and it's a good way to get around the budget i found but i, I felt it's weird because indoors when there's no artificial lighting in but they're indoors it looks natural but mm. you're still being lighted by the suns from outside by the small amount of light that's basically filtering through the holes in the room so it should also look blue or yellow and stuff like that but no it looks perfectly normal like it was being filmed on Earth, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Consider that. Uh, so they could have, they should have used that in, indoors as well. A little, little consistency. Oh yeah, okay, that's an interesting mm -hmm. point. I also found weird that how they chose a survivor because one of the person that landed has like I think two or three kids, and they all die, but he survives, and it's like I don't know. I always find it. I, I don't know if that was their intention to have shock value that you know the creatures eat the kids. You I know? think so. I think it was meant to be. Oh my god, can you believe we just did that? And there's a lot of that in the writing. I'll get to that later. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it, it's kind of untasteful. I just didn't like that. It so is distasteful, I agree. Yeah, sorry. This, yeah, I like inventing words as well. Yeah. It, it's amusable. It does uh, uh, pique my curiousness. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you had no reason to have kids there. Oh, except for Vin Diesel, you know, spitting on the guy's religion because he's cool. And it's, you know, back then or still now, it's cool to spit on people's religion as, you know, Vin Diesel did. Well, again, it's that teenage version of what cool is. Yeah. He doesn't respect anything. The laws are cool. He's capable of killing. So that means he's strong. It's this very, very adolescent version of what cool is. Yeah. Even when you think, you know, and the movie just barely goes at where you think, you know, he was misunderstood. Then those murders were probably for another reason, but he's actually a good guy. And I was like, no, he's not. He's really an asshole. He has oh. like a, he has a change of heart in the two minutes before the ending of the movie, but that's about it. He's still, he's just an asshole. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we find out in the second part that he's a terrible, terrible man. But Yeah. <laughs> so it's really, you know, when I don't like the hero, the movies become unenjoyable to me. Again, I think we're meant to empathize with uh, the the co-pilot, not him. But okay. Um, all right, let's let's talk about Chronicles of Riddick because um, Pitch Black was not working for me, but it it was actually a moderate hit. It, it, yeah. it really captured people's uh, imagination and and sort of launched Vin Diesel as this sort of spirit of awesome badassery, which again, in a retrospect, is a little bit laughable. But yeah. At the time, it did generate a sequel, The Chronicles of Riddick. Yeah. Which was going to be all about the Riddick. Yep. Um, here's what happens. Uh, here's a you know, little plot summary. Shit happens. That's pretty much what I can say about that movie. It is all over the place. Uh, after uh, Pitch Black, they escape the planet, and you know, mercenaries are hunting Riddick for a bounty, but it happens to be that one of the survivors posted the bounty because he needs Riddick's help to fight the Necromongers, um, which are basically people that are half dead or part dead or basically... The, the, the... They're death walkers from the Game of Thrones. That's what they are. Sort of, yeah. Um, so he has to, you know, Riddick says no, but then, you know, his heart of gold or, you know, his coolness says, you know, that they're... They make fun of me, so I have to kill them, I guess. That's why he decides to kill them. But in the meantime, he has to go save the girl that was a guy. Who, that was a girl, I guess, in the first movie. So he has to go to prison. So he lets himself be captured to get to the prison to then escape. And then to, it was... And, yeah, and then that, it turns out that she's uh, Electro Girl from Angel. Yeah. <laughs> and and after that, they go kill the, uh, the leader of the Necromongers. Um... Yeah, that's about 
what happens. And that all happens in two and a half hours of pain. <laughs> of awful macho dialogue that only Vin Diesel would deem himself worthy of saying. You know, I criticized Fast and Furious uh, in a previous episode for its macho monologues by Vin Diesel that are just there to say, oh, I'm cool and I'm a badass and I'm a rebel. Blah, blah. And yeah. like praising Justin Lin for getting rid of all of that. Yeah, Justin Lin was not working in Chronicles of Riddick, so it's full of that crap. And wow, like there's one scene where there's, he's waiting in the ship and this guy has a gun on him and he's like, yeah, I knew you'd have a gun on you because I'm so cool and I'm smart and I'm better and my farts smell like flowers and yours don't, but they're badass flowers. And it's like, and I'm watching this and all this time I'm like, why, why don't you just fire the gun? Like yeah. He's not stopping with the talking. Kill him already. Do something. Yeah. And yeah, at one point, he gets, you know, the, the necromongers, which how, how can you consider yourself to be good if you call your people necromongers? Anything with monger in it is never good. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It's, it's a uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, like, it's like they're peace Nazis. You know, good luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, yeah, okay... That they just gave them that name is like okay, you, okay audience, they're the bad guys, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we wouldn't have figured it out, but they're forcing people to convert to their religion. Yeah, and Vin Diesel, he doesn't want to bow down. He's like, you know, you need to bow down. He says no, but I'd like to fight that guy, and he points to, like to one of the guy that killed his friends. And they just basically oblige, like, yeah, sure, go fight him. And, you know... <laughs> well, that seems to be part of that society. In fairness, like, there seems to be codes of honors that are never fully explained and that are probably in the director's cut. I guess, but it was not explained to me. It uh, was just, he's just, you know, I want to fight that guy. And you're like, yeah, sure, okay, go ahead. You know? <laughs> and, of course, he's badass, so he kills him. And you're like, ah, okay, cool. <laughs> I have the same problem with Chronicles of Riddick in particular that I have with Lara Croft Tomb Raider. It's that when the hero is so convinced that they can achieve anything and then do achieve anything and they're invincible, I stop giving a shit. Yeah. My heroes are not the coolest, the baddest, the strongest. There's the ones who figure out a way when the going gets tough. And for Riddick, the going never gets tough because he's always the smartest guy in the room. He's always the strongest guy in the room. He's always perfect. Yeah. Like, you know, he gets... Finally, the, the mercenaries catch up with him. And basically, they bring him to a, a jail so he can save his, his friend. Basically, now the necromongers follow them. And he, they have to escape. And the guards abandon the jail. And he's like, yeah, just like I planned. It's like, yeah, you know, that that's what make, makes them so boring. It's like, yeah, you know, that when you got arrested by the mercenaries... Of course it was part of your plan because that's your character. You know, you escaped those guys before. The fact that you let yourself be arrested is like, yeah, we know it's part of your plan. There's no there's no drama. There's no shock. There's no, we're worried for him. It's like, he knows what he's doing. It's like, eh. It's also jarring compared, uh, when you put it next to Pitch Black. They're not the same kind of movie at all. No. One of them is sort of hardcore horror sci-fi, low budget, but still the other one's like, Conan in space. Yes. Right down to the ending, hint, hint. And, you know, even in Pitch Black, when he was fighting the creatures, uh, he, he was not in control, and those creatures could be erratic, could do anything, and he, you knew he was. He had to improvise, and yeah. he, he was not the top dog there, hmm. especially since he had to protect other people. Now he's like, you know, all right, I'm going to do this. You guys, if you can follow me, you know, it's good enough. If not, too bad. And it, it's... It's boring when you're watching a movie where, you know, there's a planet, everything goes flawlessly, especially in that kind of an action movie. It works for certain kinds of movies, like maybe like a um, a heist movie where they have a plan and, you know, the point is to see where their plan is and it goes perfectly. I don't mind that, you know, yeah. perfectly executed plan. But here, you know, when he, he, every, the thing is, is supposed to be so chaotic and everything goes perfect because he's awesome. It's very boring. Well, yeah, and the difference with the heist movie is that, A, you get a glimpse of what the plan is first, then you get the impression that it might not have gone as well, and then you realize, well, they never told you the last act of the plan, maybe they planned it all, and then when it turns out it's that, you can see how they might have planned it because you got a glimpse of the planning. Yeah. Here it's just like uh, um, things happen, and then 
at the last minute he goes like, oh yeah, just in case you had doubts about my coolness, uh, I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, and you're like, pretty much. Okay, thanks, jerk. My thing with it as well is that you bring up an excellent point about Pitch Black, which where he was not in control. And I feel that Riddick, a character that is as unrelentlessly cool as Riddick is, that they can only work as side characters. And he sort of kind of works in Pitch Black because he's sort of treated as a side character, albeit not as convincingly as I wished. Because if you look at Star Wars, who's the coolest character in Star Wars? It's Han Solo. Where, is he the main character? In the third one, he is. No, 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 no he's not. Never. He's not. No, and, and there's a reason for that. There's only so much cool we're willing to take. And so I think it's a mistake just to do the Chronicles of Riddick because it's just like, it's unbearably cool. It's, it's it's enough with the cool. It's not even for a, a short hour and a half. It's for two and a half hours of cool. Yeah. And it's always on him. You, you, maybe I can count on my fingers the number of scenes where he's not involved. It, it is like Vin Diesel overload. Mm. Seriously. Even scenes where he's not directly on camera, he's there, you know, in the background, list, they're say, listening and, you know, saying random stuff or he's, he's always in the vicinity. It's, um, it's weird. He has cool eyes though, you know, which are the whole, man, there are so many scenes of him putting on and off his sunglasses. Yeah. And they stopped doing that, like, in the middle of the, of the movie. And it's a good thing, because if they had kept on going with his glasses off and on, the movie would have lasted another half hour. <laughs> I mean, at one point, I was like, enough with the glasses. I get it. You got special eyes and stuff, but enough. <laughs> hey, and again, sunglasses in the movie where you have golden plated armors with two faces on the side. I mean, come on, guys. Like, some consistency in the type of universe you're creating. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's unpleasant. I I really hate the movie, I, and but I will admit that I, I sort of like it more than Pitch Black, but because it's less good than Pitch Black, it's sort of like Pitch Black annoyed me because I saw potential in a lot of places and I saw it all fall apart because somebody really loved Vin Diesel like yeah. too much. Whereas Chronicles of Riddick is like, it's just that love for Vin Diesel. And so it reaches a level of stupid that's so uncanny that I'm like, well, at least I'm entertained because I can't believe this is happening. This is really, really yeah. hilariously dumb. Yep. I cannot believe they got Judy Dench to be in that movie. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. And the thing is, what I don't understand is Vin Diesel's enthusiasm for this franchise. Yeah. And he, it's an enthusiasm he shares with, like, almost nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was on Jay Leno. He was doing an interview. And they were talking about his future project. And he was talking about making a movie about, you know, his character in Pitch Black called The Chronicles of Riddick. And Jay Leno looked at him like, what the hell are you talking about? And he what, he turned to the audience and was like, come on, you guys would like to hear more about Riddick and the Chronicles of Riddick? And like three people in the audience went, yay. And it was pretty pathetic. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't get, I don't get why he likes this character. It, he's a hateful, selfish, disgusting character that the movie keeps insisting he's cool, but never quite proves it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you, you need you need more than, you know, to say you're cool. You need to, you know, especially it's a movie, it's a video, visual medium. You need to prove it, you know, and you, you need to show it by your actions. And and getting things right is not cool. Like, that's yeah. the thing about it. Because he always gets everything right. Yeah, it's doing the right thing that makes you cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, no, I don't know. Like, you, you have the Fast and Furious franchise, which against all odds have become a phenomenon that, and reach its peak around the sixth installment. Like, how many franchises can say that? Yeah. Like, ride that wave. Like, why are you so bent over making third movie like Riddick? Especially since Chronicles Riddick was not a great success. I think it lost some money. Yeah. No, it was, it, it was it's so... Because they had wanted to make it a big franchise they even had an animated movie that came out on dvd at the same time yeah i think it was supposed to branch between the, the, the pitch black and yeah chronicles 
And, you know, like, it was just like they invested a lot of money thinking this was going to be a big franchise picture. And it's Mm. like, it was universally panned. It was just an embarrassment box office-wise. It was just the first shot when you see the villains and the guy is wearing a helmet with two faces on the side of his head. And it's like, I can't take this guy seriously now. It's like, come on. I might have if it hadn't been a sequel to Pitch Black. I might have just gone like, okay, that's the sort of universe we're talking about. Yeah. Cool, I'm in. But it's like, I've seen Pitch Black. This is a complete disconnect. You're right. Pitch Black was so, it was, you know, the, like maybe a little too much down to earth because the technology was very down to earth. <laughs> But yeah, it was very normal. You, you could see that universe being maybe our future, you yeah. know. But yeah, all of a sudden you have ghosts and air elementals, and ah, uh, it's weird. All right, so uh, Riddick, just Riddick, because apparently we're following Sylvester Stallone's naming schemes. Of course. <laughs> um, I thought Stallone went the other way because it wasn't his last one like Rocky Balboa so he uh, actually yeah. goes longer. <laughs> but I was actually thinking of the Rambo franchise okay. where he goes First Blood, First Blood Part 2, Rambo then Rambo 3 and the last one, Rambo. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, I know, which is confusing when you say I'm watching Rambo. You could, you have you have three movies where you could, which you could be watching. <laughs> So I'm watching Riddick. Watch the Chronicles or just Riddick? <laughs> exactly. No, but that's exactly it. I was like, why would you name your movie? Uh, whatever. Do you think it's going to have with the original? If he's that much in love with Riddick, I mean, he's going to be the coolest thing on screen and he's going to be always right. And it's probably going to be super boring. But people who like to see like a cool character be in control and do everything right, they're probably going to like that. But that does not make for a good movie. I mean, just look at the um, look at one of the most powerful superheroes there is, like Superman. In his movie, he is not in control, and he is not always right. And you know, of all characters that should always be right, it might be Superman. Yeah, you know? exactly. Especially and, and one that should always be in control because of all his superpowers and everything. It should be him. But no, that would make for terrible, terrible movies. So, you know, if Superman can't be perfect, in no way he should. <laughs> I find it interesting that you bring up Superman because... Man of Steel came out this summer by Zack Snyder, and he presented to us a very flawed Superman, which was an interesting idea. Like, morally strong and interesting, but a clear Superman that's still trying to figure out what you should do to maintain the values that he has. Yeah. And I find that it's intriguing because I think I would only have been interested in a Riddick movie if Zack Snyder had directed it. Nice. Zack Snyder could pull off that sort of fetishization of the male m- muscle bound Vin Diesel coolness ooseness thing and make it romantic as opposed to adolescent. Like Zack Snyder knows how to do that. He he keeps the adolescent spirit but romanticizes it to such an extreme that you go like, F it, I'm just gonna go with it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not directed by Zack Snyder, unfortunately. No, it's directed by the same guy that did, you know, the first two movies. Exactly. So, I'm not expecting that much different. And like I said, you know, I've had enough. I'm not sure if Judy Dench will go to reprise her, her role <laughs> no, no. as the air elemental. <laughs> she does not. Oh, uh, darn. <laughs> On that sad note... <laughs> If you have any questions, comments, you want to tell us why we're wrong about the Riddick franchise being hopeless, I'm eager to hear it. Like, I honestly, I'm like, I'm totally open-minded about this sort of thing. I want to be proven wrong. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, please come up with different arguments than, you know, Vin Diesel is cool. Because we, we all agree with that. We, we, need, we need more in a movie than just a character is cool. You know? yeah, 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 absolutely. And also, you know, try to extend your opinions beyond we're f, f- words you know because yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... we agree with that too but we would still like to know why the chronicles of riddick is a good movie <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> you can mail us at mail at idiomatic.com or post a comment at idiomatic.com we're also on facebook we're also on twitter please like us on facebook uh it will help us get the support to uh generate content uh and be as cool as vin diesel hopefully one day That's impossible.